Hi there, you're listening to Heather Barrow, um, and this program is Food for Life. Um, and I'd just like to say to all my listeners, a very happy new year to you. Um, I hope uh, 2020 has kicked off brilliantly for you. Um, I know um, just from being in business for a number of years that um, now is the time that many of you out there are starting to think about goals for your, your new year. Um, I myself like to write a list of goals, so they can I divide them into categories, and they can be um, physical goals, financial goals, um, uh, emotional goals, whatever you want to do, you can break it down. And I really do recommend um, if you're listening um, and you want to make sure you know the goals are in front of you. Um, you know, there's 365 days in a year, and it's easy to um, you know forget what you had put out there um, as your goals for the year. So type them out, write them out, put them somewhere where you can see them on a daily basis. You can even go so far as to laminate them, which I know is, sounds ridiculous, but I do do that. I have been known to do it. Uh, and just, yeah, I look at it throughout the year and I'm reminded of them. And it's actually a way to like get some satisfaction as well because you do actually meet your goals. You might not meet all of them, but you meet some of them, and I think it's a really good way to, to feel good about yourself and to keep going and work towards your other goals. Uh, so what are your goals if you're listening out there for the new year? Uh, are they financial? Are they physical? Uh, I am a registered nutritionist, so people come to see me for a number of reasons. And I would say uh, one of the biggest reasons next to um, gut issues and digestive health would be to lose weight. So there are, you know, so many diets out there and maybe you're listening and you're thinking, oh, this diet worked for my friend or my sister and I really want to give it a go. Um, don't be disappointed, but you are unique and what works for someone might not work for you. And I often find uh, when clients come in and they say, I've, I've done this diet or I've done Jenny Craig or I've done Weight Watchers or I've done Atkins or Keto, I lost all this weight, but as you see now, I've put it all back on. And I believe that's because I, I'm not a big believer in diets. I think it's more about um, getting healthy. And when your body's healthy, it doesn't hold on to that excess weight. So, you, you know, you burn fat for fuel, you have good energy, you're sleeping well, um, and your cells in the body are getting the nutrients they need um, to burn the fat for fuel. So, I'm not a huge fan of diets, um, but I'm not saying that they don't work either. So, <laughs> but, um, so just a few tips because I know, you know, it's, it's when it comes to weight loss goals, it can be hard to stay on track. Um, so first one, be realistic. You know, when clients come in, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the scales. I don't, I don't uh, recommend that people weigh themselves on a daily basis. Maybe weekly, maybe even bi-weekly, yes. Uh, but it gets too much in your head. So if you set a goal, I want to lose 10, I often function in pounds, but 10 kilos, um, you know, in two or three weeks, slightly unrealistic. Um, so please be realistic about your goals, make them achievable. Um, I like to set a goal for my clients, you know, if you lose one, one to two kilos a week, fantastic. Sometimes weight loss is like this and it can just go up and down. So um, don't be disappointed if, you know, you weigh yourself one week and oops, I've gained a kilo. Sometimes that does happen. So I always tell people it's about how your clothes fit not about the number on the scales and how you're feeling really as well because I've seen a lot of thin, very thin people that are very unhealthy inside. So first one, be realistic about your goals for 2020. Second goal um, in tips to help you stay on track uh, for your New Year's weight loss resolutions is to create a plan of action. So um, that's part of my job. I'm here to help you with that. You know, people don't know where to turn. Um, how much sugar should I have? Can I have dairy? Um, is, is diet fizzy drink okay? Um, what about coffee? I have, you know, three coffees a day. Should I put sugar in? You know, there's all of these questions. And, you know, some of them, yes, there are um, some answers to. And for other people, it's going to be different for the individual. So um, 
let me help you create a plan. Um, and by doing that, what I do is I see you for a consultation. It's not uh, in and out, so you're going to sit with me for an hour and a half. And just yesterday I had a client say, I, she was there for an hour 45, which whoopsies, <laughs> don't normally do that. Um, she said, I couldn't believe how fast it went. I cannot believe I've been in here almost two hours. So it does go very quickly. But if you think about how complex the human body is, I really need to utilize all that time with you to ask those important questions. So uh, there are the, all those body systems. So the 10 body systems, um, I'm asking very specific questions to see, you know, do you bruise easily? Um, do you um, get headaches? Uh, if you get a cut, do you bleed easily? There are, there are so many different questions that all have meaning when I ask them and help me to put together the perfect plan of action for you. So maybe you're deficient in iron. Well, guess what? Your thyroid needs iron and your thyroid helps regulate um, your weight loss as well, your body temperature and, and, and energy and so forth. So it's picking up on all these little clues in a consultation that I'm trained to do to put together a plan of action for you that best serves your body where you are in your stage of life. So one, be realistic about your goals. Two, create a plan of action. You can get in touch with me to help you do that. Um, three, uh, get support and accountability and that's also where I can come into play. Um, I can be your support and accountability. Uh, a lot of my weight loss clients, we follow up on a regular basis, depending on the individual, what their goals are, what they want to achieve, how far they've come. That um, accountability follow-up session could be every two weeks, could be every month, could even be two months, depending on where they are and their progress. Uh, other people maybe have friends also in the uh, wanting to lose weight, you know, join up together and hold yourself accountable. Uh, four, stay persistent and patient. So, you know, you have these goals. Picture yourself at the end of them. How are you going to look? How are you going to feel? Maybe even there's a picture of someone that you admire, um, their shape or whatnot, and you put that up on your wall. And um, that is your goal and your, motiv your motivation and driving factor. Um, but, you know, weight loss, it, it is a process, and as I said, it's not a, a necessarily a, a linear process, so be patient with yourself and celebrate the small successes. Maybe you've gone down a pant size, or your pants are starting to feel looser, or you're noticing you have some loose skin now, which I know you might, you might say, oh, I don't really enjoy this loose skin, but that's a great sign that you know you are losing weight. So. Stay persistent and patient and realize that it's going to take time um, and every small step is helping you achieve the result that you desire. So track your progress. Um, that's also where I can come into um, the picture. As I said, I don't often like to weigh people, but I know a lot of people wanting to lose weight are attached to the scales themselves. Um, so what I do like to do is take measurements. And I think that is a great way to um, determine that you're on the right path, uh, that you're having success and you're losing the weight that you want. So I just take body measurements. I'll do shoulders, um, chest, waist, hips, upper thigh, and sometimes biceps as well. And I love it when clients come in and we start the follow up. You know, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. You know, I had some setbacks, but. I think I might have lost some weight, I'm not sure. And then we take their measurements. It's like, whoa, there's an inch there, a couple inches there, and then we add it up. Seven inches, you know, you've lost seven inches in the past two months or six weeks or whatever it is, and it's fantastic. And they are just elated and surprised. So there you go. So track your progress. It's only gonna encourage you in your journey. And reward yourself for meeting goals. So, you know, <sighs> Like, as I said, it is about being healthy. I'm not the food police. I'm not going to say to you, no ice cream, if you really love your ice cream, so long as you're not intolerant to, to dairy. Um, have an ice cream. 
You know, if your favorite food or treat, cheat food is pizza, have pizza. But um, maybe only do it, you know, once a week and say, okay, this, maybe not your cheat day, but I'm going to have a little reward for all my effort. Because um, food is meant to be enjoyed. So if you really enjoy that, whatever the food that is, go for it. Um, so those are my tips to help you stay on track. So firstly, be realistic about what your goals are. Create a plan of action, and please allow me to help you do that. Get support and accountability, so a friend, family member. Stay persistent and patient and realize it's not gonna happen overnight. Track your progress, and reward yourself for meeting your goals. So um, one of my favorite areas, actually, I have people that come to see me for a variety of issues from skin issues, eczema, psoriasis, acne, to hormonal issues, you know, estrogen dominance, endometriosis, fibroids, um, gut issues from leaky gut, irritable bowel, um, all sorts of things, but my favorite is weight loss, and I think that's because uh, I'm also a fitness instructor, and I've that's what's driven me um, all my life is is being healthy and staying fit and active, and I know the reward that you get when you exercise and you feel good about it. Um, so I think weight loss, you know, to get people to the point where uh, they're comfortable going to the gym. You know, they don't feel that people are looking at them. They're comfortable taking part in group fitness classes or boot camps and not, you know, feeling body conscious about themselves is, is a wonderful, rewarding thing to do. So um, if you're listening, um, just a few tips in this new year. Um, I do recommend a full nutrition consultation if you want to get um, a big picture of what is going on um, in your body and how you can best support it. Um, but just a few tips that you can do. Um, firstly, make sure you're digesting your food. I know today we are just extremely busy, and especially as the new year starts, you know, um, businesses are just getting back to it, and it's like, oh, I've got this long list, I've got business goals that I want to accomplish you're rushed and you rush your food and mealtime or you don't even think about it and you grab a coffee. Well, your body can only put up with neglect for so long. Um, and remember the whole reason why we eat is to feed and nourish our cells in our body. Um, and there's trillions of cells and they require nutrients. But guess what? These tiny, tiny cells are not gonna get the nutrients from food unless food is broken down properly. So that's my first tip, is make sure your digestive system is working well, and you can do that in a couple of ways, simple things. One, make sure you're chewing your food. As I said earlier, try to not rush throughout the day. Take some time for meal time, even if it is just 10 minutes, that's all you have. Find a spot, sit down, you know, somewhere quiet, maybe outside, where you feel relaxed, and actually look at your food, enjoy it, smell it. Let yourself salivate because there's important enzymes in your saliva that are going to help you break your food down. So chew your food, um, if you're, especially if you're a meat eater, make sure you're chewing at least 20 times a mouthful. So next time if you're listening, maybe you're eating now, um, see how many times you're chewing because sometimes people say, yeah, I chew 20 times. No. Once you sit down and you realize it, maybe it's like five to 10 times and then it's down the hatch. So that's the first thing. Remember, that's where you can control your digestion. So once it leaves the mouth, that's it. Your body, you're relying on your body to naturally do its thing and produce the acid and the enzymes to break it down further. So once food goes through this digestive process in your gut, that's where nutrients are absorbed, but they have to be broken down to the tiniest what is called a monomer to be absorbed. So break, break, break that food down. So that's the first thing to do, chew your food. Secondly, try not to drink with your meals if you can. And that's because after food leaves the mouth, it goes down to your stomach. You have hydrochloric acid there. It's an important step in breaking your food down, particularly your proteins. If you add any kind of liquid in, be it 
water, juice, coffee, wine, it's going to dilute the acidity in the stomach and that acid won't be able to do as good of a job in breaking the food down. So just let that food mix with the hydrochloric acid, do its job. 15 minutes before a meal, if you can, try not to drink anything. So while you're getting your food ready, with a meal, try not to drink anything unless you need to take a liquid to take your vitamins or, or medications with food. And then afterwards, a good 20 to 30 minutes. And that's what I think where people have the issue is afterwards, um, they're really thirsty and they just want to down a bunch of liquid. Firstly, check how much salt you're using if you're really, really thirsty. <laughs> um, and yeah, just try and, and give yourself that window. So those are two things that you can do. Um, third simple tip, your thyroid, your little thyroid here, which is the shape of like a, a butterfly that um, sits right around here, um, it requires iodine. Iodine is very, very important for thyroid function and therefore managing your weight. Um, you want to make sure you're getting enough iodine. It's mainly sourced through um, sea vegetables. So you can get that through different types of seaweed, and there are many different types. Um, there's nori um, and kelp and all sorts of names. If you go into a health food shop such as Chantel's, um, which they're the sponsor of this radio show. So shout out to Chantel's, one of my favorite stores where you can find a lot of healthy um, foods that you cannot find elsewhere. Um, so make sure you're getting enough iodine. If you don't like the idea of eating seaweed, um, you can buy kelp salt, which actually kelp is a type of seaweed, and you can use that. Uh, they even sell iodine drops that you can add to your water. Spirulina, great way to get it. In the powder form, it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> so if you're listening, like, no way. Tried it, added it to my smoothie, and it's disgusting. Try a tablet or a capsule form. I take spirulina every day, mainly for the iodine and the iron. I think it's a great supplement for a lot of younger women, um, just to make sure they're getting enough of both of those. Um, so taking care of your thyroid is really important, and there are other uh, important nutrients for thyroid health as well. Um, liver health, really, really important when it comes to weight loss because your liver is one of your largest filtration organs. And uh, you have one door in your liver and five doors out of your liver. And your liver is absolutely filtering everything from your hormones to your medications, the food you eat, sugar, alcohol, everything. If the liver gets bombarded, because there's only one front door, you know, and there can be a, a little bit of a line of things to get processed through, it will shut the door pretty much and, and push toxins back out into the bloodstream. Your body's amazing. Toxins can't stay and build up into your bloodstream, and so your body actually creates fat stores to store those toxins. So the health of your liver is imperative as to whether you can lose weight. How do you care for your liver, you're asking? So um, your liver loves sulfur. So what foods are high in sulfur? Think your cruciferous vegetables. So broccoli, beautiful vegetable. I think I hear that being the most commonly eaten vegetable when clients come in. Love my broccoli, excellent. Cauliflower, you either love it or you hate it. <laughs> if you love it, it's great because you can do so much with it. One of my favorite things is cauliflower rice. So I love cauliflower. Um, cabbage, another really great high sulfur food. Um, cooked cabbage, raw cabbage. I do recommend actually cooking it to help release the properties. <laughs> Jill's yeah, shaking her head back and forth to a lot of these foods. I think you might need some uh, more cruciferous vegetables. Um, so what do we say? Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. And one of my all-time favorites, and I'll probably get a big head shake on this one, is Brussels sprouts. And I did. <laughs> Brussels sprouts. Have you ever tried Brussels sprouts? Cut in half, a little bit of maple syrup. No? A little bit of sea salt? Baked in the oven, delicious. 
So simple. Um, so Brussels sprouts. So those four cruciferous foods, top liver foods, your liver loves them. Of course, your liver also loves leafy greens. It loves garlic, um, beetroot, turmeric, um, all of those. So support your liver, very important for um, weight loss. So if you're just listening, I'm just discussing um, some little tips that you can do to help kickstart your weight loss goals in 2020. Um, and I've talked about some tips to help you stay on track, being realistic about your goals, creating a plan of action, which I can help you do, getting the support and accountability, being persistent and patient, as it does take time, tracking your progress, and rewarding yourself for meeting those goals. So we've talked about digestive health, making sure you're chewing your food well, you're not drinking with your meals or around your meals on either end. You're supporting your thyroid, which is really important to your metabolism and weight loss, particularly with iodine um, and the different sources to get that iodine. Um, and another one is making sure you're getting enough water. So um, I had a lady not too long ago come see me for he chronic headaches. She's had them, she claims her whole life, I'm not quite sure, but she's been to osteopaths, acupuncturists, specialist doctors. She said some of them have helped, um, and I do believe all those modalities are, are very helpful. Um, but she still suffers, so she's finally going to diet. And so I gave her a full consultation, and I found what I believe to sit be several underlying causes of her headaches. And one of them, simply, and some of them are a little bit more complicated, such as blood sugar imbalances and stress and an adrenal function uh, and serotonin deficiency. But one simple one was water. That should be the first thing you should think of if you're getting chronic headaches. Am I getting enough water? If you're a coffee drinker, guess what? You need to drink more water because caffeine gel is a diuretic. It draws water out of the body. <laughs> so how much water do you need? Is it six glasses a day? You need 30 milliliters per kilo of body weight. So if you weigh 70 kilos, you need about two liters a day. If you're a really sweaty person, you do CrossFit, you drink coffee, you need to be having more than that. So maybe, you know, up to two and a half liters a day. It's so important um, to have enough water. It is going to help with your weight loss goals. It's going to help your liver and your kidneys. It's going to flush, you know, toxins out of the body. We're losing water right now. As I speak to you, um, I'm losing water. We lose water when we sleep. And it's the one thing that we can't um, live without is water. So we can live without food, but you can't live very long without water. So do make sure that you're getting in your 30 milliliters per kilo of body weight a day. Yes, you will have to go to the bathroom more. I know it's an inconvenience and everyone's busy lifestyle and uh, I'm speaking from personal experience. Oh, I gotta go to the bathroom again, but it's really, really important. So um, don't underestimate the power of drinking enough water. So just to recap here, um, if you're listening, setting New Year's goals for weight loss. Again, be realistic about your goals. Don't set something ridiculous to achieve your goals um, that is unachievable and so you feel defeated and you just give up too early. Create that plan of action. I am here to help you do that. I'm located at G's Pharmacy in Taradell. Um, please get in touch. I have a website. It's foodforlife.co.nz. That's um, food for is F-O-R. Um, you can email me at heather at foodforlife.co.nz. You can give me a call or a text. I'm happy to have a chat about uh, your needs on 027-812-5071. Let me help you create a plan of action. I can also be your support and accountability which is the third tip to help you stay on track. Stay persistent and patient, track your progress, and do reward yourself for meeting your goals. Treat yourself. Maybe it's getting a pedicure or a massage. You've accomplished your first stage of your weight loss goals. Maybe it is having 
your favorite ice cream, which you haven't had in a while. Um, make sure you do that and take care of yourself. Um, again, work on your digestive health, chewing your food, not drinking with your meals, supporting your liver health, your thyroid health, and getting enough water. So drink up. So if you want help um, in your weight loss goals, or maybe it's something else, skin condition, you think you have a hormonal imbalance, maybe it's food sensitivities, maybe your stomach's been bloated and, and sore on and off for a while, please don't hesitate, get in touch. That is a way that your body is speaking to you and saying something's not right, something's out of balance, I need help, and that's where I come in. So thanks for listening. Um, it's Heather Barrow, and I work with you to help you find your very own food for life. And again, a big thanks to Chantel's for sponsoring the show.